Welcome back to Dyson with Death, where Roy is level 1 with 419 experience out of 2,000, and there are dogs on the ceiling. Um, uh, yeah, so here's Roy uh, at this abandoned bandit campsite. So, the ranger disappear lights his lantern and you see the flickering light disappear down the mine shaft while Roy waits keeping an eye on the ranger's horse mm -hmm. you get up to anything you whittle, well, Roy considers you going through the ranger's bags um, but he thinks better of it should the ranger come back and notice things are missing I'm clearly the one that was watching his horse and that wouldn't bode too well for me in these parts, and I'm not so desperate for money that I'm going to go you know, digging through his stuff. Mm -hmm. So Roy doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. He just waits. Does the uh, ranger come back after an hour? He does come back. Yeah, probably close to an hour. You see the lantern light flickering out from the the mine shaft and the ranger returns you uh find anything of note down there he gives a shrug they're gone say about two days back well before you got to town yeah must have got word i was coming or figured there'd be someone coming looking for them after the sheriff well you know yeah all my NPCs in this campaign have the exact same accent. It's okay. Well then, Sebastian, I suppose we better head back. Supposing so. Uh -huh. How long has she been a bandit out here? New in town. Huh? Been a, bounty, been a bounty on her head for about a year now. Mm, what about Bronson? A mm, little longer than that. It's been hitting that supply, same supply run every couple weeks for about the last six months. If you uh don't mind my I asking, um, please don't take this the wrong way, but he's been hitting the same supply run. Why is it that y'all haven't dealt with him? There'll typically be guards, but it's not necessarily predictable when he hits. It's not like I can escort supply train every damn time. It's true. You yeah. know, you don't know how many men he got riding with him, do you? Shrugs. Maybe six. Yeah. Afraid of. Only two verified. Well, now one. Well, certainly uh, a devil, ain't he? Born on my side, that's for sure. Got any idea which way Mr. Calhoun went? No, nah, this camp was too much of a mess. You guys are heading back down the mountainside by now, I assume. Nah, I couldn't make heads nor tails of the, of the tracks. That's a damn shame. It's uh, pretty hard to scrape together living out here. This bounty I reckon hunt. you're doing all right for yourself. You ain't burned through that 
25 gold already, have you? <laughs> <laughs> no, but get supplies to go hunt down uh, Bronson. Cost me about half that. For a week on the road for me and my horse. Oh, ranging ain't cheap. Yeah. Pays to be resourceful. Mm -hmm. Live off the land. How much does a deputy make? Depends on the town. I don't know if that's... Hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking maybe I should uh, make a semi-sort of... A semi-settlement here. Maybe... Eh. Typically, deputies are volunteers. Sheriff may get a salary. Hmm. Like I said, dependent on the town. Well, thank you kindly. I guess we ride back to town. I don't have any more further questions for him. Yep. You make it safely back to town. Uh, middle, middle of that day. Are you going to kill... Whoops. Fat horse to kill some more time? Yeah, I'm at back at the 3 HP at the end of that day, right? Uh, yes. Alright, so I'll just wait another two days. Um, burning through my golden town. Uh, you'll gain another 2 HP the next day. Okay. I'll say that visiting the surgeon counts as the care of a, of a healer. Fantastic. So I'll burn through another 5 silver. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to head out. God, five HP, this guy, and six men. There's no fucking way I can do that. You know what? I want to head back to... I got an idea. To Leroy's. Leroy's? The yeah, it's the general store in... Leroy's, yeah. In River's End? Yeah. Maybe... Yeah. Got a plan after all. Ah, uh, Leroy! <clears throat> Why, hello there! Uh... Roy. 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 Fine name. Fine name. Oh, thank you. I uh, like your name, too. So! Uh, you used to work with the... What were they called? The something brothers that owned that mine, right? They would uh, buy their supplies from you? Yeah, I used to outfit them. I don't know. The Prospector John's mine. Guess Prospector I John? Yeah. I guess uh, there were no brothers. No. Just Prospector John. Uh, they uh, blast their way into that mountain? Those hills? And dynamite? Is there any other way? Ain't like we got dwarves around here. Tell me about it. Uh, you still got some of them TNT charges left? For sale, maybe? Um, I don't know what this TNT is you speak of, but yeah, I reckon I still got a couple crates of black powder. Let me have a look out back. Roy suddenly has an idea. Okay. Yeah, I still got a still got a barrel of it. Uh How much does a what hmm, a bag cost? I say shaking one of my coin purses at him. Um I think 10 GP. Are there, is there ammunition for the Arquibus listed? Or anything like that? I don't Not think there is. I'm just gonna go with Greek fire price for use. Cause I don't. Uh, 
Powder is treated as a magical item in these rules. Does that mean there's no price for it? Right. Yeah. Uh, give me 10 GP for, uh, for a charge. I whistle. That's uh, not cheap. Nope. Uh, how much, uh, how big of a blast would you say a charge makes? He stretches his arms as wide as they extend. Hmm. Blow open a chunk of dirt about that big. Uh, what about in the open? How, how far away from one of these things ought I be to make sure I don't get myself blown to bits? Uh, stand back about 10 feet. You're probably safe. I'd make it more like 30 just to be sure. I pull out my transparent uh, yeah, blue cloudy gem and roll mm -hmm. it back and forth on the counter a little bit. Uh, how much like... powder can I get for one of this? Say this is worth about 10 gold. Mm -hmm. give, you a, give you a powder charge in exchange. Yeah, I, I pull out my gold pieces and kind of clatter them on top of each other a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm thinking about getting as much powder as possible, putting it in a bag, and somehow using that to, as a trap. I haven't figured out the deployment method of this trap, but maybe if I can get uh, Bronson and his men near enough to charge, I can blow them up. What are you doing telling the DM your plans? Just it helps me think through them. Yeah. What's um, rising intelligence? Six. This is gonna go great. Yeah. Roy can't. I mean, he understands the concept of boom, boom, bad. Get near enemies, but how does one light it? But like a flaming crossbow bolt fired at a bag that's plate like cleverness is not exactly Roy's specialty. I mean, he's not. His intelligence is pretty low. I think it's because he's a slow thinker and he needs a lot of time to come up with his things. You know, he's not necessarily an idiot. He's just not very fast. You know, he's got a... He's kind of an idiot. He's kind of an idiot. But at the same time, like, he, if he sits and really focuses, he can come up with some notions that just might take a while. And he's been resting for a few days here in town. So I think while he rests, it's like a... How does I, how do I get a charge, get them near a charge enough to detonate it on them, blow them all up? The notion that blowing them up might ruin them for identification doesn't even cross his mind. Um, best I can think is a flaming crossbow bolt. <clears throat> but that is a, a multi-step plan that would be very dangerous. I'd have to lure someone to a set location and be prepped, hiding. It would have to be an ambush at that point. I can't think of no way to do an ambush. Otherwise, I could maybe light, get some sort of fuse and the bag, and light it and toss it. But that's a pretty shitty way of doing these things. How the hell am talking? I supposed? No, are no, you no. talking this through with the shopkeep? No, 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 no. This is Roy's He's internal. In there in silence as the gears turn. I guess right now this is probably Roy's previous internal dialogue sure. in the days that he's been resting. Mm -hmm. How the hell am I supposed to take out six people? I, I need definitely some firepower on my side. I could gather other people and maybe make a posse out of it. Then I have to split the money with them and. I don't know. That could go. That could go bad in many ways. I'd like to do it on my own. I'd like to use some sort of explosive charge. If I get like a long fuse, like a. Like a 15-minute fuse or something. 
know how long, uh, like a nice long slow burning fuse. I could put this big charge of black powder in some saddlebags on like a donkey or something. Get myself captured by these people right before they, they capture me, light the fuse. You know, as I see them coming up and they're like 10, you know, five minutes away or something, light the fuse and then just quickly surrender and then hope it explodes and kills most of them in the blast. I think that's the way he's going to do it. Um, how much does a donkey cost? Back Ten gold. Donkey. Ten gold. All right, I'll pay twenty gold to get a double charge of TNT. Uh, is two gold enough to get a a nice long fuse? Like a Ten minute fuse. Uh, I'll throw gold. in a fuse with the so twenty gold and a few or the powder and a fuse. How long is donkey a donkey costs eight? Eight. How long is a a ten minute fuse? Like, is there a short fuse and a, lo and a, a long fuse? And um, I think it's just different lengths of fuse. Like, different lengths of string for the time. Right. Is 15 minutes really long? How, um, long? How fast does a fuse burn? I don't know. Um... Thirty seconds per foot. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus! All right, so a fifteen-minute fuse would be thirty it's feet 30 long. Feet long. <laughs> There's no way I could conceal that. Even if I'm I hit it in saddlebags, it would produce enough smoke that it would either burn itself out, or the the, the saddle would start smoking. Um, and that's not a good plan. What about? I don't know how I could... Maybe there's no way to blow him up. Uh, how the hell am I supposed to take up... Maybe... Yeah, I sat down on the wrong path? Maybe I could act like I'm joining up with them? Probably not. I think they only take the baddest of boys. They might <laughs> laugh at me if I try and join up with them and kill me or rob me. Why would they even take me? Um... Might put me through some sort of trial where I actually got to kill someone. So I might have to shoot at it with a flaming crossbow, but if I miss, I'm, I'm just screwed. I think it'd be kind of obvious if you're shooting flying, uh, burning crossbow bolts at a donkey that there's something. <laughs> I mean, how many shots could I get off? If, that's not a possibility. Um... Well, I could get 30 seconds a foot, huh? I could get a... Maybe I just get, um, you know, a one or two foot fuse. Light it up when they get next to me. Maybe I can have like the, the bag, the, the fuel and the fuse in a bag, light it and back away from the donkey, and then they can come up into the hold. What if they don't come close enough? And then the donkey blows up, then I'm surrounded by six people and I'm dead. It's a big gamble. Oh. Roy doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to take these guys. Missy Calhoun also has too many folks for him to try and take. Maybe he needs to step it down. Maybe his ambition is too big for him right now. Let's head back to the 
to the watering hole. Chat with the folks there. Maybe there's a... Maybe there's an easier job for Roy while he ponders how to take on a bandit gang. Maybe that's it. Don't quite take out these these folks yet. Just start thinking about getting them. All right. Grab a seat at the bar at the watering hole. Mm -hmm. Drink a whiskey. Yes, sir. Contemplate. Sensor. Roy's thinking to himself, maybe I should just become a bank. Easier way to make money in this. Maybe there's someone in town that's swindler. Recruiting bandits. Maybe I can, you know, maybe there's some lawful people with some questionable morals that I can raise on myself into taking advantage of. Roy thinks to himself. Uh, and sits next to you at the bar. Say, I heard you left town with that ranger. Yeah. Yesterday. Mm. Went up to the old mine, looked for Missy Calhoun, but she had already fled from before us. Heard that two of us were coming and took off. Hmm. You, uh, got a question about Mr. Calhoun? Something to say? Nah. Nah. Just not every day we get a ranger into town. What was he like? Quiet sort of fella. Seemed like he'd seen it all. He was ready to take on Mr. Calhoun and all six of her men by himself. Oof. He's got Stupid either some... Bitch. He's either got balls made out of brass or... He's an idiot. I don't suspect that they uh, promote people to rangers if they're idiots. Eh. If you ask me, the governor and all the government's a bunch of idiots. Incompetence. Really? You don't get promoted if you're if you're not if you're not. Well, the higher up you get, the dumber you got to be. Does that mean the people up the I bottom are the smartest? Guy. Well, I ain't one to boast, but... You're saying uh, Wesley's the was... best we got around here? Wesley? Nah. I'll tell you, I ain't one to boast, but I was top of my class at the schoolhouse. How many people were in your class? Eight? Seven. That was a mighty high pyramid to be topping. I didn't even go to school myself. Ah. You might be smarter than me then. <laughs> well, maybe you ought to run true. for office. I hear the rangers, even the rangers' socks are green. Did you catch a glimpse of his socks? Well... Far be it for me to judge other people's tastes, but I didn't go undressing the ranger or nothing. Well, get your hands on those socks. I'll give you five silver. I give him a this look. He shrugs, offer stands, and staggers away. Okay. Um. I walk out of the bar. So there's a quest for you. Yeah, yeah, no, I walk out of the bar. I uh, take off my socks. I put my shoes back in my boots. I hang out outside for 20 minutes, leaning against the wall. And then I walk back in. All right. I go and look for him. The guy's over, leaned on some, yeah, you see the guy sort of leaning on another, another man. I uh, slap my socks down on the table in front of him. Want him in a game of chance. Sorry to say they ain't green. Like, like hell. These the Rangers? I'm a good man with cards. What can I say? Took me a while to convince him to bet his socks. Thought I was 
stark mad, but uh, hey. Deal Roll a charisma deal. check. Roll a charisma check. Twenty-one, just barely eking under it. <laughs> well, I'll be. Ain't green. Smell a little green. Yeah, well, what no. can you expect? Ranger probably never changes his socks at all. Oh, he, pay, he hands you over five silver. All right. That pays for another night here in town. <laughs> I hope it also comes with a heavy experience reward. All right, he shouts out, I told, I, I told you they ain't green. Look, I got here the ranger socks. Those to some people that clearly don't give two shits. All right, right. Roy's going to head over to Madam Buxom's just for drinking right. this time. Yeah. There's also, yeah, card games in the back. Gambling games. I don't have a gaming might proficiency. Act. Might be able to win some socks for real. Um, so the new plan is to find out where the... Uh, where Madam Buxom keeps her cash. Cause a lot of people ought to come through here. And uh, a whorehouse is going to have a lot of money lying around. So the objective for me for now is to find out where they store their money. And if it is somewhere that could be accessible, maybe I could liberate a little bit of it to keep myself going while I try and figure out how to fight. Well, Madam Buxom is a... Uh, well, buxom woman, uh, large, uh, with red hair, strands of silver running through it. Uh, today she's wearing a red and black dress with frills all down the sides. Um, and she has a cudgel, a, little, a black cudgel tied to her waist. Your kind of woman? Um, Roy's not sure if that's for <laughs> business or for pleasure. Um... Dare you ask? No, nope, uh, nope, don't a, ask that question. There is a flautist on the little stage here in the brothel. Uh, there are no windows, so it is dimly lit inside by candles and red drapings uh, adorn the room. There are a couple of men and almost as many uh, barmaids if you will, as there are clients. Hmm. The front uh, room is like a saloon. In the back, there is a sort of like gambling den. And upstairs are accommodations. Okay. Um, I go up to the bar and I spend mm -hmm. some money drinking at the bar. And I keep mm -hmm. a close eye at where the bartender deposits the coinage. Uh, Madam Buxom is Manning Bar herself. Okay. Um, uh, what do you? How do? What do you order? How do you oh, pay? I, I'm ordering, I guess, whiskeys or beers, maybe mm -hmm. alternating between the two of them, uh, okay. paying in copper and silver. All right. Um, what do you, so? What do you order first? Madam Buxom comes over. It's a tall beer. Uh, I think I remember you from last night. The night before? <laughs> last night. A couple nights ago, maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, tall boy, please, ma'am. Mm -hmm. No, it's... Well, yeah. tall boy for the tall boy. That'll be five copper. Okay. I handed to her. I frown at her about the remark about my height. Only 5'5". Five five. Yeah, she called you a tall boy. Yeah, I know. I'm 5'5". Five five. She's either making fun of me or she's calling me a boy instead of a man. Either way, that is not a... Not the sort of rumble. Um, and watch where she... Did she pocket the money? Does she, like... Is there a safe? Is there a uh, lockbox? She the has a little uh, black purse that's, like, attached to her, uh, to her side. And buckles and opens and puts the the copper into. Okay. 
Um, while I drink, I watch and to she, see if yeah, anyone yeah. She hires pours you, one of her ladies. Yeah, she pours you ale from a uh, from a barrel. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, roll a perception check. Twenty-six. Uh, you notice uh, someone going upstairs with the lady. Did I get to see a transaction, a, a changing of coin? You did not. All right, then I will continue and sit and wait. Although you them. will remember the other night. I mean, the other night you paid for a transaction. Well, yeah, you you paid the woman directly um, for the room after you went upstairs, but before right before goods were delivered. Uh, and I, I um, spent the night there, so I don't. I never saw what happened to that money. Right. Correct. God, I don't even know how. I don't even know the answers to these questions. I think she probably. Hmm. Yeah, I think uh, money changed hands upstairs, and the. Uh, your companion would have uh, given the coin to a your runner upstairs, taken the money from you and handed it off or something before going in the right. door. So I will watch. Um, I ain't got nothing to do today, so I'll spend the rest of the day just kind of sipping my drinks here and uh, see if that lady comes back down and if that money goes to Madame Buxom directly, if there's a runner that brings the, ma the money to her. Uh... Mm, roll a perception, or I guess a charisma check. Uh, that's a 27 then. Yeah, uh, you do see someone coming downstairs who you assume must be a runner. Short, just after they go upstairs, uh, who heads into the back. Okay. Hmm. Runner heads into the back. Mm-hmm. If you're there for a few rounds, uh, Adam Bucks and myself will occasionally go into the back room as well. Okay. Can I get a rough layout of this this floor so I can understand the, the placement of things? Yeah, I told you there's a front room that's like a saloon. So there's a bar to the front left, or I guess the back left, the left of this front room. Uh, there are booths and lots of like pillars or whatever, or what do you call them, beams mm -hmm. interrupting the floor plan. Uh, to the back, and maybe set a little to the left, there's a hallway to a back room. Um, and then a staircase to the right, back right, goes up to the accommodations. Kind of like this. I've been drawn on my mountains. Uh, mountains. Yeah, it's the like, bar is, the... is rotated 90 degrees, and the door is set a little closer to the center bar comes out this way and the room's a little wider than it is long but yeah sure. yeah the bar yeah and the door comes out over here uh, I, need a, I need a better space to, can i get a, um a, something to do doodle on yeah doodle fantastic so we've got you said wider than long? Yeah, wider than it is long. Okay, and then there's a, a staircase on this side. That goes up. Yeah. And there's a door over here. Uh, the front door is uh, centrally located. But yeah. Okay. And then there's a bar that comes out on this side. That. Uh, further back, but yeah. The bar is against the back wall. Oh, against the back wall. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then there's like a... And there's a door to, to the right of the bar. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's a couple of beams interrupting and booths. Okay, so there's like... Booths around the walls and yeah. Something like that, right? Yeah. And then booths lining the walls and a okay. few tables strewn about yeah, the Yeah, I don't need... The... So to get into this, this, this is the, back, this the, is actually a hallway, not a door. There's a wall there, and then a hallway back. 
Um, so to get down that hallway would be pretty obvious. Anyone would see you doing it. Uh, yeah, but it's open. I mean, like, and you probably see someone walk back, back there. Customers and... Uh, oh, customers go back there too. Yeah. Oh, great. I'll take a beer and I'll just head on back there to figure out what's back down this hallway. Yeah. You walk down the hallway. Um, dimly lit. As I said, there's no windows, although you can see some flickering light at the end and down a couple of stairs. Mm -hmm. um, so you can take a few steps down. Um, if, uh, at, at the base of the steps, there's a door, a shut door to the right. And to the left, uh, there is a bouncer. There's a, a shut door to the right. It's at dead ends, the hallway? The hallway dead ends after a couple, a couple of steps. Okay. There's a lantern sort of... Uh, and to the, to the left, it opens up into a room. Um, but there's a bouncer sort of standing there. Um, he's like up against the side of the wall. You could walk past him if you felt like it. Okay, so I'm not. So there's a door to the right and an open room to the left. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right, door to the right, open room to the left. Mm -hmm. Something kind of like that. I know my walls are a little funky. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so I come into this open room. Is this where all the gambling is done? Yes. Yeah, there's a bunch of tables about. Uh, some of the booths are more concealed than others to be like private tables. Okay. Um, I want to sit somewhere. Dice and cards. I want to sit somewhere so I have a view of this door. Is this door visible from this room? Uh, yeah. Um, there's not exactly anywhere to like sit. You could. There's not anywhere to sit without joining a game. That's fine. I, I will happily join a game if I can have an easy view to this door. All right. Uh, roll a charisma check at minus five. Twenty-two. Okay. Um, you're able to casually sit down and pretend that you can and sort out the rules to whatever game it is you're playing. Um, you will need to spend some money. That's fine. I've got some money. Sort out a low stakes table and yeah. Okay. Um, let's all play some games. Um, and make some cash. Um, uh, we'll say with that successful check that you can break even. Let me see what the. Yeah, break even, spend some money. I I'm willing to lose money on this. I you gotta spend money you to actually make money. Wanna... Um, I want to keep. I want to play cards for a couple of hours. Um, and keep an eye on who goes through that door. How many people? Whether they're uh, proprietors um, only, or staff, or customers as well, um, and hopefully get a glimpse into the room. I will say with that check, um, you can break even and so kill as much time in this back room as you'd like without spending money. If you'd like to make money, we'll have to like risk some or whatever, but with a successful gambling check, you can hang out here without, you know. Yeah, I'm just looking to make money um, or, to, or to break even. Um, I think you see Madam Buxom head there once. Um, otherwise, no one goes in or out of that back room. Uh, you see waitresses come back here with drinks and empty, and bring empty glasses out to the bar. Okay. There was also a door off to the side of the bar, which you assume leads to a kitchen, given the size of the... Yeah. Sure, that leads to a kitchen. All right, so I'm yeah. thinking that either Madam Buxom keeps all her money on her and empties it once a day into the safe, or... She is often no. She heads back there to deposit the coin, and but this is this is a pretty busy place, maybe. Nah, not I know the gambling more so than the front room. Out front, there were just a couple of guys. How big is the little pouch that she's got at her side, or little box? Uh, not big. So mm -hmm. not big enough to hold a full day's worth of wealth earned from the front room, right? <clears throat> Nope. Roll an intelligence check. Oh, God. 
Yes! Roy, you are yeah, amazing. You yeah, you reckon, no, it's not big enough. Probably seems logical to suspect that she emptied it out into that back room at some point. Okay. Perhaps when you saw her go back there. Right, right. That's that's what's slowly coming to Roy over the course of the day. Mm -hmm. All right. They're depositing their money in the back room. So Roy's plan is to get himself a black bandana and uh, or raid this place in the name of bad Bradley Bronson. Um, and then this is not the right place. Um, I know where the I think I know where the money is it's probably kept in some sort of hard to get into thing I don't have lock picking but I could get some dynamite or some black powder maybe blow it up maybe um, the question is how do you properly raid brothel I can't just come into town guns blazing. Don't have any guns? Why the hell not? What would Bradley Bronson do? That's what he would. That's what Bradley Bronson would do. He's got the men that he could do that with. How do I? Why don't you get any men? Where are Roy's boys? Yeah, maybe Roy needs to do this under the cover of night. <laughs> He's just got a whip. Maybe he could just do it with the crossbow and the threat of danger. He is proficient in dagger. Fucking whip specialization. What the <laughs> hell was I thinking? I could never I be a bandit or do anything undercover with a whip. Like, yeah, some guy came through who was a fantastic with a whip. Whipped half my men to death. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, that's Roy. We all, we all know who Roy is. Think they know who you are? Well, but you know, then Roy comes through with his whip, and it's just it. Who carries a fucking whip? Roy, that's who. Yeah, that's... All right. Um, I do. I finish up my card game. I head back out. I ask Madame Buxom how late their their establishment is open. You know, do they close their doors at any given time? Uh, we're open late into the night, he says. There's always a, a space for you in Buxom's bosom. Uh, how much does a, an evening with yourself cost? Oh, I'm flattered, but I'm out of the business. Everyone's got their price. That's my saying. Well, if you're serious, make me an offer, but I don't think you are. And she makes to walk off. Oh, she knows me too well. All right. I got a plan. I got a plan. Um... But for it, I need a black bandana. And I'm not just going to go buy a black bandana in town and then rob a place with a black bandana. <laughs> you know, maybe Roy... I'm going to make a self-imposed intelligence check on that one. Okay. Wisdom check? Oh, wow. Roy Roy knows not to do that. Wasted my 20... Did you ever buy the black powder? No, I didn't. Okay. I considered it, I talked to him about it, and then I backed off. Um... Okay, got it. So Roy goes and buys like a a shirt or something, a black shirt. Her okay. one's kind of ripped and bloody. So he goes and buys a, a black uh, long sleeve shirt. Um, I think that will cost you clothing. Tunic, eight silver. Okay. I pay out the rest of my silver. Should get sold my gemstone. Um, I will keep my blue shirt on. I will 
take my knife when I'm... Uh, I, I had an in the, the previous night, or I had a room at the bunkhouse the previous night, and I think this tonight I'm also going to double up there. Um, mm -hmm. Let me just pay for that as well. Um, and I will cut my shirt in a way that I can make a, a nice bandana that will cover my face and everything. You cut it, or do you just I, you wear know, your I, shirt on your face? No, no, no. I, I cut a, a big square out so that yeah, I can put it in my pocket, mm -hmm. and then I can put on the bandana later. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, leave all my stuff, uh, except for my... What are you bringing with you? I'm going to bring my dagger and my knife. Mm -hmm. with me. Um, and I'm going to go back to Madame no Luxem's... Whip. No No whip. No crossbow. No crossbow. I'm going to show up as Roy with his, you know, his leather vest, his blue shirt, um, his breeches, all his things. Uh, I'll keep the bandana tucked away in a pocket somewhere. I'll mm -hmm. come in uh, late in the evening and uh, pay for some services. Okay. You uh, go upstairs with a companion. With a companion. Okay. And I shell plan on uh, what? Yes, I'll shell out the gold. Shell out the gold. Yep, yep. Um Upstairs, then, so up that staircase, there's a long hallway and just a bunch of rooms. Uh we will enjoy ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then instead of just, you know, passing out and falling asleep, Roy's going to kinda of like lay down, face away, and then keep his eyes open. Let his breathing slow down. Just keep mm -hmm. himself awake for a couple of hours. Until he okay. hears the girl leave, or until he's convinced that the girl's asleep. Okay, uh, roll a wisdom check. No, no, no good. 15. I think you doze off at some point in the night, like, while waiting for her to fall asleep or whatever. Um... I can do this plan again tomorrow. Then I might no, have you to wake keep... up. With, you wake up with a start at probably like three or four in the morning. Like shit, I over. I slept. And Ugh. I look around. Is my companion here too? She gone? I feel like she's gone. I feel like they wouldn't stay and sleep with you all night. Yeah, they know. they got other shit to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's gone. Right. Um. Okay. Ooh. It's late, right? Three or four? Yeah. Always gonna get himself dressed. In the wee Realize hours of the morning. He's wearing his blue shirt. Blue and bloody. Your, um, your companion certainly doted over your bloody shirt and your cat bite. Roy realizes he's made a huge error very obviously still Roy. <laughs> so, what he's gonna do, he's gonna take off his shirt all the way around. He's gonna <laughs> shove it into his pants. <laughs> so he's gonna be bare-chested. And then right. he puts the black bandana over his face, you know? So it's just here. <laughs> oh, boy. He's got six intelligence. Okay. All um, right. And then he's gonna sneak down the hallway and start yeah, creeping so you down open the, the door. stairs. Okay, you start creeping and then you realize, shit, I should have checked the hallway to see if there's anyone here. And you look back over your shoulder and you realize there's no one there. Okay, woo. Yeah, Roy, Roy's kind of an idiot. Yeah, um, you're alone in the hallway. Uh, you creep on. to the stairs. And I slowly make my way down the stairs, getting ready to peer out into the room as soon as I have an angle to, to view, just one eye through. Yeah. You creep down the stairs, uh, roll a perception check. No, 17. No. All right. You don't see anyone in the in the main hall. Um, most of the candles have gone out. There are still a few flickering stumps keeping the room the even more dimly lit. Main room? Yeah, the main room from the saloon. All right, there's no one in here. Uh, so Roy then starts like creeping around the corner, keeping low, kind of squatting and walking low to the ground. And he's going to come just along the edge of this wall. Roll another perception check. Even worse. All right. no, Definitely nobody here. 
Definitely nobody here. All right, so you reach that hallway. Okay. Um, take a, a peer down and a listen down the hallway, see if that bodyguard is still there or if it's just dark. Roll a perception check. Let's see if it's... No, 19. Oh. It's just dark though, right? Uh, All no you one... can hear, yeah. Uh, it's, um, there is flickering light in the back room. Uh, flickering light coming from the back room? Yeah, and you can he- all you hear is the sound of your uh, heart pounding in your ears. Okay. Roy will start creeping down this hallway. Roll a dexterity check. How creeping? How creepy are you creeping? Twenty-three. So creepy. So creepy. Uh, the the bare chest completes the creepiness. Roy gets to the door and realizes it's probably locked. Yeah, That's you why get to the lock to... door. Yeah. That's As what... you're thinking this, your heart leaps into your throat as you realize there is someone right next to you. Like at the door in the shadows that I didn't see? Uh, yeah, right here. The bodyguard. Fast asleep in the chair. And I can hear sounds coming from the, the card game room. Um, you can't quite see. I mean, you have to peer like... No, I hear them aud- audibly. Um... Yeah, now that you like you, I don't, I don't know that I don't know. You failed your perception check. The the guy is snoring. Um, yeah, I and mean, if you stop and you listen, yeah, you can hear sounds in the in the card room. Um, but uh, this yeah, hallway is kind of dark, right? Uh, yeah, the hallway is totally dark. There's some flickering light from the card room. Um, from your current vantage, you can't really see in there, aside from like an empty booth back here. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Um is going to very gingerly try the door. Uh, it is locked. But that bouncer in that chair has probably got the key. People awake, though. Hmm. Um. Alright, so back against this wall in as much of the darkness... Ooh, hold on, you guys can't see. Back against this wall in as much of the darkness as possible. That not show because oh, I'm on the wrong thing. Here we go. Right, right around here-ish. Mm-hmm. Roy's going to uh, kind of creep against the wall, low to the ground, um, to try and get a view into the room, and also to get adjacent to the sleeping guy. Alrighty. Okay. Um, you peer into the room. There is a single table, sort of near the middle, mm-hmm. still playing. Uh, pretty low energy. Uh, there's like five dudes sitting around the table. But Madam Buxom's not there. Madam Buxom's not there, no. Uh, Roy will lower the bandana to his neck. So it's mm-hmm. just like a normal bandana now. Mm-hmm. And uh, reach around for the guy to see. It's, it's dark, so I can't tell. But I'm going to try and like look for the keys on the guy's waist or... See, see if I can find the keys visually before I touch him. Roll, okay. Uh, roll a perception check. Twenty-two. Yeah, you spot a ring of keys. Uh, yeah, on his on his waist. How are they attached? Um, I. How would you attach a key ring here? I think it's the belt is run through the key ring. So in order to get the key ring off, I'd have to take his belt off. Yes. Well, that makes it very, very difficult to remove. That's probably a great security measure. Yeah. Um, I look at his belt. Mm -hmm. Made of. Leather. I look at the key ring. Um, Is it one of them like bend it apart and slide a key off? Or is it one of those like multi loops? it's It's a brass ring. Um... It's not immediately obvious how it attaches to your six intelligence. But it looks like a solid brass ring with like three with a couple of keys on it. This is the moment of truth for Roy. Either he backs out now. No, it's fine. No one will be any the wiser. Worst case scenario, someone sees a shirtless man walking around a brothel in the middle of the night. That's, that, he, that's explainable, that's fine. Or he 
kills the guard while he sleeps and tries to take the belt off um, without alerting any of the people in the other room. In which case, he's committed murder. Who are you murdering? The, the sleeping guard. I could, you know, cover the mouth and drive a dagger into his neck or something. Maybe. Probably flail. He probably makes some noise. You probably could have just... Even if you just slit his throat, he would still move. He would definitely attract their attention. How is he gonna... <sighs> Roy's not ready to kill anyone yet. He's gonna sleep... Slink back to his room. Take his shirt out of his pants. <laughs> get himself dressed. But at least he knows how everything's laid out now. And... <laughs> and he's sorry, got a new plan. Roy's got a new plan. He's got a real plan now. Uh, we'll probably have to wait till next week to get into it. But I'm going to tell you what Roy's plan is now, everybody, so you can get hyped this, for this genius maneuver. Does it still involve sneaking around shirtless with a bandana in the middle of the night? Yes. Yes, it does. Good. All right. All right. I'm on board. Okay. So he is going to buy that those black powder charges. Then he's going to do pretty much the same thing, except he's going to toss some black powder charges near the door. It'll blow up, blowing open the door, uh, probably scaring the shit out of everyone in there. And then in the smoke and confusion... Dark shirtless with the black bandana over his face into the room. Um, he'll need some sort of light to see. Find the the safe. Black powder charge it open. Doesn't open. He's got a better plan. He'll get a long rope. And, and hang tie, it to the, it. tie it to the saddle of his horse outside, come inside, blow it open, run in, tie it around the safe, run outside and get the horse to go, hopefully dragging the safe out with it. Can you drag a safe upstairs? Can a horse do that? Maybe not. God, this is a multi-man job. He needs the keys for Madam Buxom. All right, so what he needs is a night with Madam Buxom. To get, what if she doesn't have the keys? Roy's kind of screwed. He doesn't know how he's going to make his living. He's not going to murder anyone. He's not a killer. I mean, he'll kill people if he needs to, but he's not going to kill people just for innocent people. He killed people money. the very first session just for, like, lying to you about disappearing cows or something. Couldn't or be trusted. You know, he could get me killed out here. He deserved that oh, fee, but I'm not going to murder people oh, right. for money. You know, I'm not going to. All right. How about some experience? What? Four, what has Roy done to deserve experience? So you get uh, 65 plus 10, so 75 experience for killing or driving off the hyena. Oh, nice. Um, you will get... say 25 experience for collecting the bounty on Horatio. Mm. Give you a new, I'll give you a hundred for exploring the new areas and I don't know, learning about the world and whatnot. And uh, 20, um, the player has a clever idea. Is that 50 or 100? Uh, that 50 is 50 to 200. Right, I'll give you 50 for sock quest. Yes. Um, can you think of anything else? Um, escorted the ranger to the mines. Uh, That's kind of nah. just role-playing experience. That was in with 100. Yeah, okay. Um... Yeah, that's all I can see. All right. 
that's 250 total plus my existing 419 brings me to 669 yeah long hard slog to has this been three sessions or two three Ooh, Roy. Now you don't get experience for fleeing from the scorpion. Is this four? First one was half. The I first one we made a character and rode part way here, part way to this town. The second one was the rest of this town. That uh, was a uh, all the stuff involving the um, Missy Calhoun. The third session was Horatio. The fourth session was today, bringing back... So it's been like three and a half sessions. And I'm only at 669 experience. Hmm. You have a 10% bonus? No, you don't. It's okay. I like the low levels. I'm I'm quite happy to play at yeah, low levels. Level one is rough, though. That's like a... Hmm. One shot and you're dead. Yeah. Uh, it's a rough area to be a part of. Well, that's it for this week's Dicing with Death, unfortunately. Uh, I believe we can both play next week. Next week should work. Right, but we are going to hit that deep holiday season. So yeah. late December, we, get... we might miss a few sessions. So I think next week will work. The week after, probably not. Mm -hmm. Um... And then the week after that, I will be, oh, we may be, yeah. 21st, I will be driving back. I'll be in California then, but like between. We might, we'll, so we'll do the 7th, we, we might shuffle we may the be able 21st to one way or the other a little. Yeah, so we'll do, there will be Dicing with Death next week. Uh, we'll probably be able to get one around the holiday season or more. Um. If we don't do a Dyson with Death on the week of the 11th through 17th... Um, uh, we, I won't be able to that week. Right, right. So that week we will... I will probably do a 24-hour non-D&D stream in, replace, in place of Dyson with Death. We'll just do a 24-hour a mar marathon. Assuming your internet works. Yes. Yes. But I, I have... Mm -hmm. Have they redone the internet up there? Uh, it should be coming online today or tomorrow. So I got to make some calls and check some things, but it should be good. And then I'll have my uh, contacts up in that part of the world actually test it for me. And then um, contacts. my associates, contact. my family members, my hosts, my in-laws. Damn. You know, th that's all the same two people, just many different terms for them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, XCOM stream now, if you guys are watching live. Cool. Yeah, so maybe we can catch some, an extra long dicing with death around um, around the holidays, say like the 20... 20-something. 20 I don't know what else, yeah, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, something like that. Sure. Coolio. So that's it for this week in Dicing with Death, everybody. We will see you next week for more uh, hot shirtless Roy action. And if you guys have any ideas of how Roy can help rob this brothel that aren't completely insane, uh, would you please post it in the subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash koibu. Uh, I could use some ideas for how to rob the brothel without getting caught and without killing anyone. Always got I would standards. prefer the insane ideas personally, so you can post those too. All right, post your insane ideas and your normal ideas, and uh, hopefully before next week we'll sort out how Roy can get away with this. He's a, a pretty morally ambiguous cre character. You know, he wants to bring back the bodies of the sheriff and the ransom the deputy, but then he's going to go rob the brothel and kill the guy who might have betrayed, you know, who he couldn't trust. So he's a he's a complex character. Not quite crazy. Indeed. Um, All the best characters are. Yeah. So uh, see you guys on the subreddit. And if you stick around, we're going to be playing some XCOM. XCOM 2 is currently installing. I should have installed it last night, but it's running now. We'll play some XCOM Enemy Within while XCOM 2 installs. Ryan? Um, enjoy the last few weeks of this quarter. 
Yes, indeed. Try um, not to be too mean to your students. Eh, fortunately, I don't really have the opportunity. I don't have to be mean. Well, as in, I'm just running labs. I don't actually have to. I get to give them the pity points, the gold star for showing up points, and let the professors deal with the actual actual grading. Nice. All right, then. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.